favorite thing. Take them, lovely. And just think in a few days we'll be trying them on him. And if it's a girl, I'll put blue ribbons on the bonnet for you. If it's a girl, don't be silly. Robert wants a boy, and a boy it's going to be. Well, boy or girl, it'll get a warm welcome from Peg and me. I guess we have to go. Wes has to get up so early in the morning. Oh, no hurry. We can wait until Robert gets back. Oh, no, I'll be all right. He'll be here any minute now. If you should need me in the night, just send Robert over. I will. Thanks. Well, good night. Good night. Good night, Catherine. Good night, Peg. Years and I'd like to horse with him. Hear that, Peg? Yes. Somebody in trouble in the swamp. Hold up! A little closer. Doctor? Uh, Wesley. How's Kate? Asleep. She'll live. But she still hates this little dear. Oh, Wes. If she'd only let us keep her. We wouldn't miss ours so much. No, it, it wouldn't be right. It's all she has left of him. She'll forget. Sweet, ain't she? <laughs> what do you think her name ought to be? Well, Robert's mother's name was Elnora. Elnora. I'll always call her El Nori. Where do you think you're going all dressed up? I'm going to start at high school. High school? You're going to start your churning. I'm going to school. I'm going to learn other things besides farm chores. Hmm. Well, before you go anywhere, you get in here and wet on your hair. All curled up like that, you look like a play actor. Come on.
told you to wet it, didn't I? I don't really need a hat. Of course you need a hat. Everybody wears a hat to school. Here, I'll take some lunch for you. Thank you. And plenty of work when you come home. You'll get enough of it in one day. <laughs> Uncle Wes? Well, Elnora. Guess what? Well, let me see. I'm going to high school. No. Yes, Mother's letting me, and I'm so happy. Margaret! Well, what you keeping Elnora out there for? She's going to high school. High school? My thing. Going on this side, I'll know. No, it. Mother's letting me. Well, what's come over? She even fixed my lunch for me. Better run over, Wes, see if she's feeling all right. She said I'd get enough of it in one day, but I'm going through. Let's see the pail. I thought so. Ham hocks and stale bread. For me. I'd better be hurrying, or I'll be late. Oh, well, look what I found for your moth collection. It's all fixed in everything. Thank you, Uncle Wes. Oh, tut, tut. Now, you run along. You'll be late for school. Goodbye. Because we wouldn't send her off to school in that rig. It would make no difference. She'd shine in a gunny sack. Huh. Ham pop. Sense. Poor Kate don't know any better. She doesn't, doesn't she? She was a school teacher herself. I have a good mind to go over there and give her a talking to. You know what that does, don't you? Just make the treat the kid work. Ah. <laughs> it's about time somebody told Kate he wasn't worth it. Why shouldn't she know? You're a grand girl, Kate. I'll let him run it in his own way. That goes both ways. Did you shoot at my hat? Is that a hat? You mind your own business. Sure, that's right. Where are you going, Elnor? High school. What you doing that for? To learn things. Ah, oh, what good is learning? Everybody doesn't want to be a dunce like you all their life. High school. <laughs> Philip, Peterson, 
Perkins. Here. Panda. Wallace. Present. Weeks. Here. What? Why are you late? Uh, I was registering. Very well. Have you your books? No, sir, but I'd like to get them. You can get your books for the term by leaving $10 at the superintendent's office. $10? Yes, $10. Take the third seat there in the first row. <laughs> Quiet. Class remains here for the algebra period. Now, uh, how many of you have already taken algebra in the elementary school? Very well. Look it out and then sign your name to it. Who is Miss Cornstalk? <laughs> Quiet. That's my problem, sir. The name is Comstock. Who did that? I must have done it. It's a silly mistake. I guess I was nervous. Miss Comstock, your problem is very well done. I want the class to study it carefully. It's a perfect demonstration. Why aren't you eating your lunch, Miss Cornstalk? The name is Comstock, please. Don't let them worry you. Eat your lunch. Well, I'm not very hungry. For pity's sake, Pam. Oh, oh. oh where's the cabbage? Oh. <laughs> 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 the joke's on me. I took the hired man's lunch pail by mistake. Hired man. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. I've plenty for both of us. I'd appreciate it. If you'd uh, help me with algebra. I'm sorry. I don't think I'm coming back after today. You see, I live so far away. It's too bad. You're the brightest in the class. <laughs> Where'd you get that oh, yeah. <laughs> Take the corn stalks off your hat. <laughs> Don't get the hired man's <laughs> lunch sale tomorrow. Make it bologna instead of ham hock. <laughs> Tell me corn stalks and bean stalks and tuition costs twenty dollars and books besides. I love nothing. I can't go back. Never go back and get an education. I wish I could die. There, there. That's what your mother meant, saying you'd get enough of school in one day. It doesn't matter what they say. You're a smart, brave girl, and we'll help you. I can't go back in my shoes. Eleonora Comstock, I'm sorry to say, for the first time in your life, I'm ashamed of you. Why, West, how can you say that? I can, and I do. Let a lot of half-baked little idiots laugh for our education. You suppose anyone worthwhile ever has success handed to them on a silver platter? Look at Abraham Lincoln. Look at Carnegie. Did they care if silly kids giggled or criticized their clothes? Did they? I say, did they? Oh, bosh. As though we can't scrape up enough money for our books and tuition. I can't let you do it. I'm not offering you charity, young woman. You can pay us back. But how? What's wrong with selling your moth collection? Could I? Do I have to think of everything? That woman across the valley, what's her name? You know who I mean, the bird woman. She writes books on forest life and buys moth collections. Pays good money for them, too. But how could I find her? Where is she? Leave it to me. I'll find out. There's the book money and the first month's fee. I hate to take it. I know how things are on this land nowadays, but I'll pay it back. I don't know what I've done without you all these years. Come, come, no time for any more sob stuff around here. I got my pigs to feed and the cows to milk. 
You run along home before your ma starts on a rampage. I hate to go home. Don't give up, Elnora. The more grouchy she acts, the more you must keep on loving her. You can't fail. And don't let on you got the money from us. She's that proud she'd make you give it back. You know. I know. I'll never forget how good you've been to me. Go on, run along now. Well, Ed? I suppose you know that was the tax money. Of course I do. But tax collectors don't get broken hearts when they have to wait a bit. You didn't mind. Not at all. She's worth it. You're a grand girl, Peggy. About time you got home. Plenty of chores to be done. Better all cheering? No, the cream's in the cooler. You can do it in the morning. I can. I'm going to school. Well, didn't you get enough today? No, I liked it fine. I'm the best one in the algebra class. Get me some water. So wait a minute. You didn't eat your lunch. What's the matter with it? Wasn't it good enough for you? Just wasn't hungry. There are fees to pay. Who's going to pay them? I'll get the money somehow. The sentence, I suppose. I'm going to school. You try to discourage me today, not tell me about the fees, and let me go looking like a scarecrow. But I'm going anyway. I want to learn. No one can stop me. No one wants to. Little mule. Just like him. Well, think she'll ever get over it? I wonder. Oh, it isn't fair. That poor child. My mother hating her so. Up My moths. Well, take them down. You know that's where your father kept his violin. I'm sorry. If it hadn't been for you, he wouldn't be down there. Go to bed. Get out of my sight. Get out. Tell me you were going by without stopping in. I must be there early to get my books. Come on in. Peg wants to see you. Uncle West, do you think you could cut my shoes down a little? I don't know. Maybe. Let's ask Peg. Peg, I 
was afraid you were sick or something. I will be, if it doesn't fit you. Not for me. Not for her. <laughs> well, it's certainly not for Peg. And I'm sure it ain't for me. It's for you, all right. <laughs> you must it with those clumsy paws. You go on now, now. Elnori must change. I can't. There she goes, canting again. Hold her nose and put it on her. Can she wear them little thin shoes to walk all that way? Well, I'll be doggone. That size 14 pattern fits to a T, every stitch of it. You can't carry a tin pail with a get-up like that. <laughs> I won't have to eat. There's a woman for you. Everything on her back, never mind her stomach. How would you like a nice new lunchbox? No mirrors. Nothing up a sleeve. All filled and ready to be gobbled up by the beautiful lady in the magic dress. I don't know what to say. I love you both so much. Shall I harness up the horse? No, I want to go along the same way as yesterday and feel the difference. I'm so happy. But what about the moth? Oh, I almost forgot. The bird woman's name is Parker. Here's her address. You can go there straight from school. She'll buy them all right. <laughs> now I, I must go. Thank you. Custard to your father. It's good for sick people. Is Bob? Mark Rob? No, a moth collection. Can I see it? Sure. Gee, they're great. <laughs> Some of them are awfully hard to find. Well, I gotta go to school now. I'll be late. You go to school. High school. That was a good joke on us. You're dressing up and bringing a ham hock. <laughs> well, I made sure I didn't get the hard lunch this time. <laughs> oh, a frog! Oh, I wonder how I got in there. It must have been that little ragamuffin I met on the road today and gave him some of my lunch. What a mean trick. I'll fix him. To see what we had here. You learned to mount moths. My friend Mr. Wesley Sinton would be worth 200. Opportunity to earn more money to go to college. Well, well, what an ambitious girl you are. My mother isn't able to help me. You see, she's not very well. I understand.
Well, now we'll get down to business. I owe you $50. I can hardly believe it. I want to talk to you. Didn't you like the custard? He didn't eat it. He just lay still and won't talk. And he didn't throw anything at Snap all day. Maybe he needs help. Show me where you live. Pa! Pa! Wake up! Somebody's here! See there? He won't pay no attention to me. I guess you'd better come with me. I'll get someone to come down here and look after him. Is he going to stay like that? I'm afraid so. How long? For a long time. I know someone who needs a little boy awfully bad. You mean for keeps? I think so. If you'll be nice. Will it take Snap to? Suppose we go and see. I left my new things upstairs. I ain't getting home yet. Maybe we can get him sort of shined up before she comes. Well, I don't know. You don't think she'll turn him down, do you? Oh, no, I don't think so. Not Peg. Say, what do you put that kerosene on my head for? You must have caught something from Snap. Have their old shirt and trousers sure fit you. Ain't you got any kids? No. Had one, but the Lord loved him so much, he wouldn't let us keep him. The Lord must have liked my old man, too. He was a good fellow when he was sober. But gosh, what wallopings I got when he was full of liquor. It sure warms you up on cold nights. You mean he gave you some? Yep, it burned, but I could swallow it. Say, Billy. Would you like to stay here? Yep, if Snap can stay too, but she don't seem to cotton to us much. She's like this. That is, if you're good. I'll be good, but I won't let no woman make a molly cattle out of me. You wait here and I'll get a tie and dope for you. Hey, come on out there. I want to show you something. Wait till you see the difference. He's a cute little shaver, and not really bad. Oh, bad, cruel boy. You're a wicked, wicked rat. My poor baby. Why did you do it? I was just trying to put him out of Snap's way, in case you were letting him in for supper. Well, I guess that spoils everything. Looking mighty sweet, Peg. New dress? Mm-hmm. Very nice indeed. After all, Peg, it's the motive of an act that counts. Billy really meant to protect those kittens, didn't you, Billy? I hoped you would let him in if I tied him up out of his way. There's an honest nature for you. He won't be defended at the expense of truth. You eat your supper before it gets cold. Dog's right back. Come on, Billy. You can sleep in the barn tonight. Maybe she'll feel better in the morning. I can fix you a nice bed in the straw. And it'll be as snug as a bug with, with, with Snap right there. All right. Let's get out of here, Snap. Let's go back to our shack. Better than an old barn anyway. Look! 
don't want to be hard with. But that's not the kind of a child we want. You know it is. Well, he never had a chance, Peg. Drunken father. Those hooligans down at the railroad track. He is a sweet little fellow, Peg. What he needs is someone like you to mother him and take care of him. Well, where? There. Do you hear that? He's up to more devilment. All right, don't get excited. I'll see what's the matter. Billy. Billy. Oh, you poor little fellow. You hurt. He must have fell out of the hayloft. You hurt bad? I don't think so. Let me take him. Hand me that cloth there in the basket. I, I want my old man. You're all right, little fella. I want my old man. I gotta go down there in case he wakes up. I got it. I got it. There's bats in the barn, spiders and gold. I won't go back in there. There, there. Don't cry, don't cry. You don't have to go back to that barn. Your honey Peg's going to take care of you. There, there, honey, don't cry. Well, come in with me, Phil. I want you to meet Wester Sinton. He's one of the finest men I ever knew, and a great woodsman. He'll tell you a lot about Indian law. I'd like to. Sort of worried about Billy. He's feverish. Wouldn't let go of Wes's hand. Wes had to sit beside his bed all night. I hope it's nothing serious. Well, that's what we want to find out. Ah. Howdy, Wesley. Morning, Doc. There's the doctor now. I want you to meet my nephew, Philip Ammon. Mr. Sinton. How do you do, sir? How do you do? He's going to be here for a while, getting well. After a breakdown from overstudy. I want you to see lots of it. We will. Where's the patient? How do you do, Doctor? How do you do, Miss Sinton? Meet my nephew, Philip Ammon. How do you do? Come this way, please. Excuse me. Sure. Oh, uh, make yourself right at home. Thank you, I will. Betsy, reassure me. I thought so. My name is Philip Ammon. Nora Comstock. I live down the way. I'm pleased to know you. Are you interested in Indian relics? Very much. I'm collecting them. I've got loads of things I've found in the Limbaloy. Could I see them? Of course. When I get back from school today. About four. I'll be right here. Waiting. Nothing to worry about at all. All he needs is canned nourishment. That's fine. I'll leave this prescription at the chemist and he'll send it over. Fine boy in there. Good steady eyes. Going to keep him? I'd like to see anybody get him away from Peg now. Hmm. Hello. How are the relic collectors getting on? Famously. Miss Comstock here is quite an expert. Oh, no. <laughs> Uncle Wes is. He taught me all I know about moss and relics. Well, I'll have to go now. I'll, I'll be late to school. Maybe give you a lift? Well, that'd be wonderful if it isn't too much trouble. Not at all. We're going right by the high school. 
Thanks for coming over, Doctor. Do you see what I see? It's been a wonderful ride. Thank you, Doctor. Don't mention it. See you this afternoon? At four. Goodbye. Goodbye. Gracious, getting grander every day. Tell us you have a bowl. He isn't. He's going to buy some of my Indian relics. No need to blush about that, is there? Did I? <laughs> <laughs> She's a mighty nice girl. Careful, I'll tell Edith. I got a letter from her this morning. Think she'll like it? Like it? She'll be tickle pink. It's the best book on laws I ever saw. Hello. Hello. Mr. Allen brought you a present. Color plate. Oh, how wonderful. I appreciate it so much. How can I thank you? By selling me some Indian relics. I'll give them to you. No, you won't. I want to help you with your college fund. You've told him. Yes. Could I see some of them now? Good. Shall we go? Yes. Look in that dress. Mother will have to know sometime. Miss Dallin, my mother's not very well. She's rather brusque with strangers. You won't mind? Not at all. I'm usually quite popular with mothers, children, and dogs. I'll take them. Those things are over here. That you, Eleanor? About time you got home. I want you to finish cleaning that chicken coop. I've started it. Hello, Kate. Hello. I wasn't expecting company. This is Philip Ammon, Dr. Ammon's nephew. Ammon? He saved my life when Eleanor was born, and I don't thank him now. Where'd you get that dress? From, from Aunt Peg. I won't have my girl except in charity. But I'm not accepting charity. I'm going to earn money. Where are you going to earn money? Selling my moth collections. Your moth collection. Besides, Mr. Ammon's going to buy some of my Indian relics. Well, that's more like it. We can use the money to help pay the taxes. Of course, it, it's about time I, I help Mother with the taxes. Get your relics out. Got lots of work to do when the folks go. All the points are perfect. And this is an Algonquin medicine mortar. Well, they're very nice. What do you think they're worth? I don't know. I think $15 is a fair price, don't you, Mr. Sinton? Yes, yes, indeed. It's a fair price. Take them and go on. Thank you, Mr. Hammond. Not at all. Well, I guess we'd better be going. Goodbye, Mrs. Comstock. Goodbye. Mind you shut the gate as you go out. Come on, Eleanor. We've got to clean up that chicken coop before dark. Goodbye. Goodbye. I, I couldn't. They were really worth much more. Thank you. For the college fund. Goodbye. Goodbye. And Laura! Coming. Now you see what the girl's up against, don't you, son? Yeah. Is Mrs. Comstock like that all the time? Yep. Worse. The poor kid. Oh, the gate. The gate. She's kind of fussy about her gait, isn't she? I found that out years ago. There was a 
Catocula. I'm looking for a Yellow Emperor. They're the most valuable of all. The Yellow Emperor? You mean they've actually got royal blood in their veins? <laughs> I know where there's a moth college. Oh, no, please. But don't tell me the darn things go to college. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I call a group of cocoons. <laughs> there's one. I wish Edith enjoyed doing things like this. Who is Edith? My fiance. Where is she? In Washington. We're going to be married as soon as I complete my law studies. She's a wonderful girl. I'd like you to know her. I'd like to. Maybe we'll build a summer place up here after we're married. How long is the course going to take? Three more years before I'm admitted to the bar. It's a long time when one's in love. It's getting late. We'd better go back. Oh, I'd forgotten all about time. And I must pack. You're leaving? Tonight. Oh. You're a grand girl, Elnora. Are you getting along? Perhaps. Don't forget, I'm going to buy all the Indian relics you can find. <laughs> Thanks. I want to have again. Yes, I am. I'm going for a music lesson. Seems to me you're always going over there. I guess your own home isn't good enough for you anymore. It isn't that, but I do want to improve myself. Mrs. Park is everything I ever hoped to be. She's been a real friend. Ready, Elnora? Taking him with you? Just down the crossroads. Hurry up or you'll be late for your music lesson. Feed Fowl is perfume for Anne, gloves for Sally, handkerchiefs for Joan. Why do you have to hand around presents? Because it's graduation and all the girls are giving me presents. You can save up your graduation dress for while we get married. Why, that won't be for a long time yet. Oh, Eleanor. Oh, Pete. Don't say all that hooligan. Why not? I don't like him to even speak to you. My, what a jealous husband you'll be. You bet. My money. It's gone. She where? Well, what's the trouble now? All my money's gone. Everything I saved it for graduation. Even my moth collection. All gone. Stolen. Saving money on the sly, eh? Well, that's what comes of it. I knew I'd eat close to graduation. And now, I can't go. Can't you wear what you have? No, they'll all have nice new white dresses. Well, maybe I can manage to get a dress for you myself. Oh, Mother, will you? So long as you don't go begging to the sittings of that Parker woman. I promise. I feel. 
I'm graduating. Morning. Morning. Well, I'm ready for the surprise. What surprise? My dress. My graduation dress. Well, here it is. You're joking. That's an old one. Well, I changed my mind. I decided I couldn't spare the money. But you promised. Well, maybe I did. Besides, I didn't have time to make it. This one is plenty good enough. I couldn't wear that. I couldn't. I'd rather not go. How could you do a thing like that to me? What's the good of graduating? The learning is what you wanted, isn't it? Well, you've got that. Why throw money away? How mean you are. And I thought... I thought you'd changed. Good morning, Miss Comstock. Good morning, Ann. Good morning, my dear. Are you alone? Yes. Oh, why, uh, where are your things? Are you going to change here? I'm not going to necessarily. Not going? Why not? My mother didn't get the dress after all. Oh, my poor darling. I don't mind. What's graduation anyway? It's the education that really counts. Oh, nonsense. Oh. You must go to those exercises. You're an honor pupil. Let me see. It's nine o'clock now. Uh, the exercises are at twelve? Yes. Uh, uh, Anne! Well, what are you going to do? Never mind. Anne! Oh, hurry. Yes, ma'am? Uh, go into the attic and unlock my trunk. I want to get something out of it. Yes. And hurry, please. But Mrs. Parker... Uh, never mind. Just come along with me. What beautiful material. This is my wedding dress. This is it, Anne. Well, I, I think we can do without that. Did you order the flowers, Anne? Yes, ma'am. Was it that much? Yes, ma'am. She's been saving a long time. But who took it? I ain't sure. But that old Pete Carson was hanging around here that day. You mean that loafer they just let out of jail? Yes, ma'am. Why didn't you tell me this before? I just remembered. $208. Dirty thief, I'll get it back. I'm looking for Pete Carson. He's gone away. I don't know where he is. <coughs> what do you want him for? For stealing. I don't know anything about it. Put that 
get down. Where did you get this? What's it doing here? It belonged to the man I loved. He left it at my house. The night he drowned. <coughs> In the quagmire. Why not? I was pretty enough then. But when he died, I died too, inside. I didn't care. Have you ever loved anyone like that? Well, know it. I am the one he loved, not you. Now get out. Go on, get out. <coughs> Miss Comstock. Well, uh, uh, show them in, Ann. Yes. Just go right in there. My mother. Come in, Mrs. Comstock. I'm Miss Parker. Yes, I know. Probably I shouldn't have come. But I knew I'd find Elnora here, and I have something very important to say to her. Would you like me to leave you alone? Oh, no. You are her best friend. I want you to hear what I have to say. Elnora, I've been mean and cruel to you since the day you were born. I worshipped your father. And I deliberately blamed you for what happened. The day I found out that the man I loved didn't love me at all. You found love and affection elsewhere. Oh, I don't blame you. But I do want you to know that I'm sorry and ashamed. And I ask you to, to forgive me. Will you? Oh, Mother, of course I will. Don't you think you'd better rest a moment? You know my child better than I do. Do you really think she'll forgive me? Why, of course she will. You've been so good to her. She loves you so. I know I must work hard to gain even her respect. Maybe it's too late. Can't you help me? Why, why, of course I'll help you. 
to be done in town. Would you mind taking my car and doing them for me? What about Mother? It might be better if she rested for a while. Besides, I want to have a talk with her alone. The four books from the library and the cases from the picture frame store. That's all. You. It was Mrs. Parker's idea. I'm a new woman inside as well as out. I can hardly wait for Aunt Peg and Uncle West to see you. I'm going to send you both home in my car. But well, you're very kind. And her mother's a mean one. Gosh, she's been gone a long time. I hope she got the money back. Would you mind giving a loud toot on the tutor? Certainly, madam. It's Eleanor. She got a lady with her. Quick, eh? and see if your face is clean. Maybe it's her teacher. Come in. The thing I resent that you didn't tell me years ago that the man I'd been grieving for wasn't worth a single tear. So that's it. You know. Yes, I know. I went to get Eleanor's money back. I got my senses back instead. Oh, Kate. I should have told you years ago. No, Peg. I wouldn't have believed you if you had. A minute. I can't, I can't. The pigs are dying. I think it's the cholera. Cholera? My sake. There, look at them. Rolling over dead, every one of them. <laughs> I'm afraid they're going to... Gosh, Uncle West, they act just like my old man did when he was full of liquor. Billy, where'd you throw them old grape juice leavings? In the trough where we always feed them. That's it! <laughs> Billy's right, they're drunk! They ate the grape juice leavings and the roaring tight. you, Kate? Well, it is, and it isn't. You're looking wonderful. Oh, it's Philip. Oh, they're grand people, Edith. You'll love them. They're quite uh, rustic. Yes, and pure gold. I want to invite them to the party tomorrow night. Now, Phil, you've got to draw a line somewhere. They'd only be uncomfortable. Oh, no. No, they're real people. Oh, all right. That young airman. 
Aren't you going out to speak to him? I'd rather not. Just now. Who's the girl? I guess it must be Edith Cower, the girl he's going to marry. Come on, you mustn't feel that way. Well, hello, Wes. How are you, Philip? Mrs. Senton, this is my fiance. Miss Edith Carr, Mr. and Mrs. Senton. How do you do? How do you do? Oh, there's Elnora. Pardon me. Hello, Elnora. Hello, Philip. Gee, I'm glad to see you. Do you remember my mother? Well, why, yes, of course. You're looking very well, Mrs. Comstock. Thank you. You don't mean to say the pigs were actually intoxicated? Well, if you don't believe it, I'll show them to you. Uh, oh, Edith. Yes, dear? Excuse me. Mrs. Comstock, this is my fiancé, Edith Carr. How do you do? And this is Elnora. Oh, yes. I've heard a lot about you. We want to ask you to come over to Uncle's tomorrow night. You see, Edith and I are going on to Washington to be married. And Uncle George is giving us a farewell party. Well, Elnora, would you like to go? Well, I... Of course she would. Thanks. Elnora and I had quite a lot of fun a few summers ago, hunting moths. She's quite a collector. Oh, by the way, did you ever catch a yellow emperor? Not yet. They're hard to find. We'd better be starting home, Philip. We'll be late for tea. Goodbye, Mrs. Comstock. Goodbye. Don't forget, 8 o'clock tomorrow night. Goodbye. Goodbye. Would you mind giving me the prescription for this sudden change? I can scarcely believe it. There are some cures you doctors never heard of. She would cure any trouble. Come on, Uncle West, and dance with me. Man, sakes, Elnora, I haven't danced for ten years. Oh, go on with you. It's time you started then. Pretty late in life for me to start anything. I don't think I'd better try it, Elnora. Don't forget, next dance is mine. Philip's a nice looking boy, Elnora. She's one of the most unusual girls I've ever known. Philip, do you realize you've been talking about her all evening? Uh-oh. My girl's jealous. Well, maybe I'll have a try. It's awfully hot in here. Let's go outside. All right, we'll schedule. That specimen's at that. Hello. What's going on here? Don't you ever give the moths a rest? Well, my boy, you never can tell when you'll find a rare one. Where? I've got some new fishing tackle I want to show you. All right, Doctor. Excuse me. There's a big one of some kind. Well, there he goes, right through the gate. Don't lose sight of him. He must be in here somewhere. Oh, there he goes into the underbrush. Should I go after him? No. No, the brambles are too thick. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to invent a long-range moth gun. Are they good, dead, or alive? <laughs> there was a yellow emperor, too. The only one I need to complete a valuable collection. Never mind. There'll be another one along. The only one I've seen this summer. This collection means an awful lot to you, doesn't it? It means enough money to start at college. I thought you'd saved enough. Every set was stolen. Oh, well, that's too bad. But why not let me help you? I couldn't. It's nice of you to offer it, though. No, I mean it. Really. I hope you didn't mind my doing that. No, I didn't mind. It's just friendship. I understand how you feel about me. We'd better go back now. Yes, I, I guess maybe we had better. 
a bar that comes underneath very straight. Well, I don't know that I can agree with you. Doctor, hmm? have you seen Philip? No, not recently. Well, now, we saw him outside there just a minute ago, Doctor. Oh, so we did. Thank you. Hello, dear. Just what does this mean? Why, nothing. We, we almost got a yellow emperor for our Elnora's moth collection. Do you expect me to believe that? Really, it's true. Oh, come now. You may as well admit it. Chasing moths is a flimsy pretext. Why, what do you mean? You know what I mean. Now I understand why you want a summer place here. Edith! I'm sorry. Now you apologize to Elnora. I'll do nothing of the sort. Oh, yes, you will. Take your hand off me. Don't speak to my mother that way. Never mind, it was just a misunderstanding, wasn't it, Philip? I'm terribly sorry it happened, Mrs. Comstock. I understand. Love does mighty funny things to people sometimes. I think we'd better go, Elnora. Good night. Good night, Elnora. Elnora, are you in love with Philip Ammon? Of course not. But I wish we'd caught that Yellow Emperor tonight. It would have meant enough money to start at college. Then I wouldn't care about anything. Don't you worry. We'll manage. Now you go to sleep. Good morning, Elnora. Good morning, Philip. Morning, Mrs. Comstock. Good morning, Philip. I hope you haven't blamed Elnora for what happened at the party. Blamed Elnora? Well, I should say not. I'm glad. You see, last night I made a discovery. Well, Philip, I hope your discovery will do as much for you as mine did for me. Well, you'll have to excuse me. I must run over to pay. And Laura, I had a long talk with Edith last night, and we decided to break our engagement. I'm afraid I spoiled everything between you. No, you haven't. I've stopped caring for Edith. You mean... One quarrel makes you stop caring for a girl you've loved for such a long time? I didn't quite understand it myself until I realized I'm in love with you, not Edith. I can't believe that. You've made all your wedding plans together. A man can't change his heart overnight. It hasn't been overnight. It happened the first time I ever saw you. You make me feel responsible for the tragedy. Please go back to her. She loves you or she wouldn't have been so angry last night. You think you love me, but you don't. You're just sorry for me. I know. Please, Elnora. Won't you believe me? Please go, Philip. Is that Mr. Ammon going back where he belongs? Soon, I guess. You gonna marry that snooty girl from Washington? I don't know. I don't want to talk about it. Gee, what's the matter? Nothing. Only I want to be alone for a while if you about mosque or college or anything anymore. Please go home, Billy.
Give her time, Philip. I think she cares for you, but like most women, she's headstrong. Come here, Billy. You care for a boss or a college or anything anymore. Where is she now, Billy? Back in the swamp, crying her head off. rapidly, deeper and deeper in love with you every minute. I'll pull you out if you'll pull me out. Don't be silly. Pull me out. Tell me the truth, honestly. Don't you love me a little bit? 